What is your kind of philosophy with objections? How do you overcome them? Dude, I think they're totally freaking made up. Like <laughs> early in a cell, in a sales process, they are absolute hogwash, if you will. I'm originally from Arkansas. They're smoke screens. That's yeah. all they are. Totally. They're just testing you. Yeah. I mean, when you guys walk into Best <clears> Buy, you know, you're like, and they're like, hey, how can I help you? What are you looking for? No, I'm just looking, man. I'm just shopping. But then liar, eight seconds liar. later, we're <laughs> like, liar, hey, liar. Wait, where's, where's this? Where's the TVs? Yeah. Where's this dongle for this thing? And you're like, oh, it's in the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. That was me. I was in Best Buy literally last week looking for a gimbal, the DJI yeah. gimbal mm-hmm. for, the, for the. But I bet you told him, oh, you're just. I walked in straight up, and the person at the front says, can I help you? I'm, no, I'm good. <laughs> and I just walked straight on back. And then I'm back there looking around for the gimbal, and I will go to get it, and the door's locked because it's a high yeah. value oh, thing. Yeah. So they have them locked behind the case. And then I'm looking for somebody, and they're like, I'm like, I need somebody. I, literally, it's just three minutes ago. And then like, they're like, no, can I'm I help good. you? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm just looking. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> oh, it's so funny that that's the case, too, because not only that, like, I asked my wife, hey, babe, I'm, we're talking about human nature right now, by the way, in case you haven't caught on. When, when I asked my wife, hey, babe, where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. You pick. I'm not sure. What I use, right, and I used it in, in Joplin, Missouri years ago when I was with a Prospect. I asked. It, I thought you were going to say when you were with a girl that wasn't your no, wife while you were no, still dating. Geez. No, I'm going to actually give the answer in the third story. Okay, uh. <laughs> but I was in Joplin, Missouri. I asked the gentleman. I was, you know, it ties well to the podcast. I said, "Hey, sir, do you know where your life insurance policy is?" Not the best way to word the question, by the way. Right? If I had to reword the question, yeah, I would say, "Hey, I'm sure your life insurance policy is here. Where do you think it is?" Like that's better. That's more leading, yeah. right? But I said, "Ask sir, do you know where your life insurance policy is?" Dumb question. You're going to get like no's and I don't know's, right? Which is what I got. I don't know. I said something that changed my life forever, and you're going to yeah. want to use this. Okay, if you're driving, this is gold. This is a good one. I, like talk to your phone afterwards or something. Like don't 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 miss this one. I said, if you knew where it was, where would it be? Can you repeat that? If you knew where it was, where would it be? Follow up question, ding, and also use the hypothetical question as well. And what that does is it makes someone stop and think. Because I don't believe in moving forward in a sales process unless you get answers to your questions. You have, to, from a closing standpoint, you have to train your prospect to make decisions when you want them to make decisions. Otherwise, you are allowing them to be in control of the sales process. That's really good. I like that. Train your prospect to make decisions when you want them to make the decision. Yeah. And sometimes a straight up question doesn't get you there because it puts up the wall, right? Totally. Totally. So you keep them moving forward by uh, eliminating the, um, the sales pitch, <laughs> the sales pitch, uh, and you ask them the hypothetical. Yes. And, and what's funny is in Joplin, Missouri that day, years ago, the guy said, well, if I knew where it was, it'd probably be in the filing cabinet right over there. So I pointed the filing cabinet. I'm like, is it that one? Can I look at yes. it? Yes. Can I open it? Yes. Dude, guess what's sitting in the top drawer of the filing cabinet? <laughs> it's just flipping policy. Yeah. But eight seconds before, I don't yeah. know. Stop listening to all this craziness. Can, can we pause? I want to know if you've solved this, where do you want to eat, babe, question. Yeah, the, I have. The, I don't know. I have. What? what are the, how do you solve that one? Dude, I can get any, any anyone's wife to answer that question anywhere, anytime, forever. Okay? And here's what you do. Babe, you know, do, you, you know, do you know where you want to eat? No. I don't know. You pick, right? Well, if you had to choose, what would you say? If you had to choose, where would we go? If you had to choose, what would you pick? And then she's like, well, I'm not really sure. Well, are you thinking more like Chinese or Italian? Then I'll start giving options. Oh. On the third, Narrowing it down. Yeah. option. Uh, I don't know, maybe Italian. Okay, cool. You want to go to like, um, you know, uh, Mr. Zins or, or you know, Fazoli's? Well, I don't, I, she calls it fat Zoli, so she doesn't like Fazoli. <laughs> so she's like, Mr. Zins, it is. I made that up. I don't, I don't, I can't even think Mr. of Mr. Zins doesn't sound like, like an Italian no, restaurant. No, it doesn't. But you see what I'm going on. I'd say right? Giartano's. That would be. Okay, there see? You go. I should have just leaned on you for that. Olive Garden? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I used to love Olive Garden. Uh, then I learned there's better Italian. So. Yeah. <laughs> and so on this topic of moving forward, I'm going to yep. keep this moving forward. Hey. That was a little. I got to work Boom, on my transitions, that's good. but no, know. that's great. Uh, what, what's the the fifth tip? I feel like we've covered eighty seven tips in this. Probably episode. it's been a lot. Um, but tip number five, big tip number five. What is it? It's what I've been trying to do for the last five years: invest in others. It will always come back. Right. That's what I love about Roger. Man, is he's been investing in in in, in our relationship for many years. Knowing something, if as long as I kept showing up and making sure I did my part and didn't quit and didn't stop and all this stuff, he knew something. He knew we'd do some stuff together. He's speaking at 8% virtual. 
and a presentation in Dallas in July 23rd and 24th. Boom. Right? Boom. Big There's boom. another one. That, boom. that is a big boom. With Eric Thomas. It's going to be Roger That's Short man. and Eric Thomas. Nobody else. Okay? Nobody <laughs> Isn't that else. crazy? That's crazy, man. That's sick or is that yeah. sick? Right? Hip-hop preacher. That's it. Are you put me on in front of him or in the middle of his act? Uh, maybe before, <laughs> middle, and after. Oh, gosh. Come oh, on gosh. now. Yeah, there's Roger go. the MC now. No. We're going to bring you down from the ceiling while he's speaking. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That'd and you're going to be awesome. rapping the five year old reasons. Yes. 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 <laughs> that people don't buy. That's right, man. Come on now. Let's I, do I think it. you have a sample for our audience. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> That is not going to happen. It's going to be have a different day, probably late in the evening, and some different beverages. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, it, All right. It, so it, this idea of investing in others, you you say it comes back, but like, what does that look like? Why does that come back? Or where did this idea of investing in others even come to you, like to see the value in it? Well, I mean, it took off for me as a as a um, early agent. I had a manager call me and say, "Hey, I've got two agents struggling. They're up in northern Missouri, and." Can you come help them? They're not making any sales. And I'm like, I guess, you know, I hadn't really trained anybody at that point. So I drive for four and a half, five hours and spend time with two guys, Greg and Hunter. We go, and I'm like, I'll just take them cold door knocking. I don't know what else to do. I didn't work leads back then, you know? <laughs> and for those who don't know my story, I, I made $117,000 in my first eight months selling life insurance on a 35% commission level, no leads, cold door knocking, cold calling while I was 20, while I was playing basketball, while I was taking 21 credit hours a semester. It doesn't get much harder than that. Man, your, dad, your dad was a tough boss. He only gave you 35%. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> door to door. Go hit it, Cody. <laughs> I was with, yeah. I was with Mutual Omaha. Oh, I was yeah. selling it. And the only thing I had was a guaranteed issue whole life. That's it. Oh, my hey, gosh. You, yeah. You yeah. Stop. Man. Dude. Rough. You got to show up and keep moving forward anyway. Well, right? here's the good thing about that: everyone qualifies. Like, there's no health. There's no health. That's right. It was so easy so for me. Just roll it. I mean, can, can I have? Yeah, you can have this. You can have as many as you want. As you want you know, uh, <laughs> up to the max, ten thousand for you, sir. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was twenty, but yeah, it, was, it wasn't much. But I went up to Moberly, and I traveled up there and helped these two new, two new agents. Mm. First door we knock, we get in. Cold door knock, by the way, just like Section Eight housing and stuff, right? We we, we cold door knock, get in the house. Make the sale, leave, high fiving, hugging the prospects, high fiving the agents. We go do that. We make five sales in one day. They think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. They're like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? And then I drive home. I leave the commissions, the apps, the money with them. And I was driving home practically in tears, thinking, man, I've found what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the actual selling of insurance because I was dang good at it. But what I was even better at was helping others be dang good at selling insurance. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew I had something special. I didn't act on it then. And then finally, December 29th of 2015, I finally shoot a god-awful YouTube video <laughs> and put it up and been doing it ever since. Yep, 30,000 subs later. Yeah. I, I have to say that, you know, when you invest in other people, it, it always comes back to you. I, I want you to think of it this way. In this business of life insurance sales, the two things that you have the ability to do in most cases, uh, there's probably some that you don't, you can't do this, but in most cases, 99% of the cases, you have the ability to go write a policy and help a family, but you also have the ability to recruit an agent, bring them into your team, and then alongside with that, uh, you know, uh, alongside of them, help them become successful too and invest in their success. And when you do, it gets reciprocated. And when you take time to invest in other people, it comes back to you. So you have the ability to build a team here, build an agency. Yep. And it starts with one, right? Austin, you and I have known each other since you were in junior high. I, th I right. always say this, right? <laughs> it was like 19. Was in, was in, I think you, well, night, that you was, were in diapers, weren't you, though? <laughs> you were, oh, my God. <laughs> and he was a protege. So really, he was a college graduate at the age of 19. He was, he was kind of one of those guys. <laughs> he was a professor of a college uh, at 19. Yeah. <laughs> None and, of this is true. And he built, he <laughs> at built, Harvard, my, he built my first website. Oh my he built my first website. You know, it's probably 10 years ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've had a relationship, and I've seen him grow so much in his own talents. His, he invests in himself. He invests in other people. He's now got a team that reports to him at wow. our company, and he's investing in them. I watch him do it, and it always comes back. He's learning himself, and he's growing. Investing in that team of yours, has it made you better? Oh, my gosh, yeah. And also, like, uh, like shows me where else I need to grow. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I want to be better at leadership and management and team building. So 
That's right. I might ask you a few questions later. All right, okay, buddy. I love <laughs> and, that. And you may think, well, like, where's all this going? Like, so to become a better salesperson, I have to invest in others. I don't get the direct correlation. Sure. If you put someone beside you in the seat and you're running leads, or you put someone beside you while you're doing phone sales and they're listening to you, watching you do the process, it makes you the best that you can be because yes. you know you need to be on your A game. You're on your A game because you don't want to screw it up for them. You know, someone yes. is watching me. I'm now accountable. It's like when you said, I want to tell everybody about my goal because then it's out there and then they help hold me accountable. Totally. You do the same thing when you bring someone in. And so yep. when you're investing in them, like if you think about all the pivotal moments in your life, both of you guys and all of our listeners, if you think about pivotal moments in your life that were that were life change moments, yep. it was probably when someone took the time to invest in you. It was probably That's when right. someone took the time to do something for you, to invest in you. And it's not it's not just a one time thing. It's it's a it's a relationship that starts. And when that relationship starts and they lean in and they invest, you can feel it. You can feel the change take place. And you never forget that. Like I've got people in my life that I can never forget the things that they've done for me. And I want to do that for other people. It will make you a better salesperson. It will make you a better human being. It will make you a person who attracts other people. Yep. All of those things will accelerate your career, will accelerate your life. Yes, yes, Your dad yes, yes. invested in you. Big time. Right? Your dad invested in you. There's probably some other people that invested in you. Totally. Do you, do you remember totally. who? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, just watching my mom. She's taking care of four kids, you know? <laughs> And early in, in, in before my dad became successful, juggling, you know, she's also working a couple jobs, watching, you know, all four kids and like all this other stuff, you know, like she, yeah. she was a freaking warrior. I'm like, man, she's juggling so many tasks at one time. Like you, you have to notice and learn and watch mm -hmm. those things. Like I'm like another thing, I'm so impressed by your guys' team, right? Austin, freak, right? You, <laughs> freak. Chris Ball, mm. freak. A master networker, amazing dude. Huge heart, right? I'm watching Zach literally a couple days ago on the way to Target, like helping an agent for 30 minutes debrief on something they shouldn't have sold, the, the, the sell that they maybe should have got that they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm listening to him and I'm like, man, this dude's really good at like training and helping people and debriefing and talking yeah. through stuff. Like he's a master sales trainer. I'm like, you, the four of you, the Live Insurance Academy podcast crew, are freaks <laughs> in a good <laughs> Thanks, way. <buddy. laughs> yeah, when, when you train others, it highlights any shortcuts you're taking, but it also reinforces the things you know because yes. you're re-saying it, which then reinforces it in your head. So yes. investing in others. Today we covered the five tips to become the best salesperson ever, ever. period, on, Boom. on planet Earth. Period. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Those are understand the value is a relationship. Two, invest in training. Three, maximize your opportunities. Four, always have forward motion. And five, invest in others. And Cody, we're going to talk about in a second um, how you invest in others, some, yeah. some big opportunities and some ways that people can engage with you. And after that, we're going to do something that we've never done on this podcast before. Uh -oh. It's going to be pretty fun. It's going to be a quick fire round of questions. Uh -oh. Wonderful. And you're just going to... Quick answers. And you all are going to get to learn some uh -oh. fun facts about Cody. I love it. I'm in. Um, so Cody, uh, before we d get to that, can you maybe share one way that you're about to invest in others and that others can invest in themselves through, yes. through training. I love that. Yeah, that helps with two and five on our list of five tips, right? Um, 8% Nation, something I started literally across the street at Nissan Stadium here uh, back in, in uh, October of 2018. And... I had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> it amazes me that you did that. Freaking like when crazy. I think about that Nissan Stadium, uh, who did you have show up at that first one when you had no money? Yeah, Grant Cardone, Ray Lewis, Hall of Fame NFL linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, Tim Story, Coach Michael Burt. Like I spent two hundred ten thousand dollars on speakers, half a million dollars on the event. Only brought in three hundred grand from tickets and sponsors. Lost two hundred k first like year. You went and borrowed oh. money to pull that event off. Yeah, <laughs> on a hope. Yeah, that you could do it. Yeah, why? I knew, I told myself, dude, you, I know this is scary. <laughs> I know this is big. I know you don't have the money. I know you're scared to death. I know nobody respects you yet. You pull this off. People will talk about you forever. And I'm like, I guess I don't have a choice. <laughs> and, and on top of that, you, because you invest in yourself and you go to these conferences, you were seeing that there was all these in conferences that invest in different industries, mm -hmm. um, but there wasn't one 
uh, at this level, yeah. uh, good one for for this nah. industry. I, I think you all said that they used to play piano. pianos in the corner. <laughs> insurance? I don't, I don't even, even know, know if that's what. True. At the, I've been to some. I, I so I've yeah. been to an old school insurance conference, and it's a bunch of old dudes with their head down, and like they've got jackets on that they bought, you know, twenty eight years ago. They're still wearing the same one, and like they've got worn out boots, and like the music is bad. The audio visuals are slides, and they're half on the screen and half not. I'm like, what is going on? Like the classical that, music. Oh, what is happening so in here? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, why? I don't want to be a part of this. This ain't sexy at all. No, dude, it's so boring, man. And so, like, what did you want to do? Make insurance sexy again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the first time ever, oh, right? That's great. And and <laughs> you're so crazy at these events. Last event, you dropped. What ten k from the ceiling? Yeah, literally ten k in cash. Yeah, dropping from the ceiling. People are like jumping. It was an insane moment. If you've not seen, just wait for this, this year. GIF of like Cody dropping money. Yeah. Uh, go watch it. Uh, what's your Instagram? At Cody dot Cody dot Yeah, I love it. I love engaging with people on there too. So. We're gonna to try to get you to drop some money when I speak at the virtual. Dude, whatever Let's you want at the virtual. I have a hard time saying no to Rogers. Money. <laughs> Can you send some money? Yeah, yeah. Whatever <laughs> you want. Okay, cool. Rogers is good of a salesperson as there is. He's hard to say no to because he, he invests in a relationship first, and then he and then when he asks for something, it's like, dude, he's such a good dude. I got to do it. <laughs> so when you send the money, will it be in fifties or hundreds? Probably hundreds. <laughs> That's how that assuming the sale. Yeah. yeah. Um, so eight <laughs> percent. You started it a few years ago, Nissan Stadium. Yeah. Um, and it's still going. Uh, you have a oh, yeah. few events coming up. Uh, what? One of the only conferences, in, in I think it was the only insurance conference post-COVID to happen in 2020. And there's a lesson in that. I believe the show must go on. I believe you should always have a forward motion. Tip number four, mm -hmm. tying back to it. Dude, I, I don't think, like, nothing should keep me from doing an event to help people if I want to do an event to help people. Nothing should stop you as a life insurance agent from helping more people and making a ton of money. The only thing that will ever stop you from freaking crushing it, changing your life forever, is you. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Mm. Yeah, so, and we yeah. attended that event. I mean, it was it was it was socially distanced. It was safe. I yeah. mean, it was very well done. I was super impressed until everybody started tackling each other for money. But yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you guys were a part of it. Yes, Thank you. I was I was yeah. impressed. Yeah. Uh, and we're super excited to be part of the one coming up in July. Dude. What's the dates in July? July 23rd and 24th back in Dallas at the Statler aprisnation.com to get tickets. Promise you it's it's selling out. I'll probably oversell it on purpose this year. Yeah. So you want to be there. there. Commit to it. Um, yeah. All the links that Cody's sharing will be on the show notes page liapodcast.org slash EP55. Uh, you can check those links out there to get registered. Again, quick recap. March 5th and 6th, 8% Nation Virtual, wherever you are, um, attend that event. Yeah. It's I think free. that's crazy that you give that away for free. Yeah, You're spending money on these speakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we just spent money on Les Brown uh, as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to spend at least 30 grand in ads, you know, and I'm going to spend, we may spend 100 grand on just the virtual event and then give it away for free. <laughs> oh, my gosh. People think it's stupid. I, I'm like, but that's an investment in training and it's an investment in others, right? That's it's, right. It's like doing everything. I, well, that, that's why I put on Instagram. I mean, it's probably sound a little, little arrogant. I mean, you guys know me deep down. I'm really not, but I, I just put on there like, make an event so irresistible. Keep doing more, keep showing up, and maybe people will return the favor and show up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of my motto. That's great. All right, we have the quick fire questions, dude. I'm ready. Come on now. All right, uh, favorite on the road to the field snack that you have in the car. Oh, uh, <laughs> come on, buddy. You just it's told us last night. Well, I mean, the first thing that came to me was like, um, used to, used to chew sunflower seeds. I don't really do that anymore, but I would say my, my, I love candy. Yeah. I'm a candy <laughs> guy. I'm going to, I'm going to be eating candy. on What the candy? Home. What candy? Uh, sour. Okay. Anything sour, yeah. sour Skittles. All right. Know. Let the agents hear the Cody Eskins door knock. What does it sound like? Do you have a door knock? Oh, the pitch or no. Oh, do you like it? Oh, you got the Change two it at up. the end. Change it up. That was nice. Um, all right. What is, what's your ideal lead count when you were in the field or what, what have you found is the optimum amount of leads for agents? Yeah, I loved, I loved about 25 to 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Great. a good number. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. And when, when you invest in training, it's not a one-time thing. Um, 
you're no. constantly investing in training. How how often would you say Cody Askins is investing in training? Or? I, I've got to have some type of some type of investment every month.